Thank you, uh, Professor Dhar. It was a great uh, pleasure and honor to be part of this very distinguished panel. And I think we have uh, we have heard uh, a lot of things today uh, from Professor Sakshana, Professor uh, Sharma, Professor uh, uh, Professor Dhar uh, himself, and uh, Professor Mahajan. So I don't. I think I'll. And it has been long over shooting our uh, time uh, uh, allotted. So. I'll uh, probably make one uh, small remark and close this, and probably we should uh, spend some time with questions and answers. Uh, one of the, if we look at, uh, because uh, a lot of things have been said about health sector already, about low allocation. I would like to highlight that the budget also shows a particular direction of the health uh, healthcare uh, that the union government is trying to push us towards. And, and that is, uh, it's not new, it has been there. It con Every year, the union government spends uh, or cuts allocation on crucial schemes of primary care, uh, schemes related, scheme related to maternal and child health, or the National Health Mission I wanted to uh, bring uh, it here. Uh, if you look at allocations uh, in real terms from the year 2016-17, Virtually, there is no increase over this entire period of time uh, in allocation. But then, at the same time, uh, a large part of the scheme being demand-driven, we see every year that in the revised estimate and in the actual uh, allocations increase. So, what is the problem? If allocation uh, out, uh, ultimately expenditure is increasing, what is the problem, uh, one may ask. I want to point out that this tendency of lower allocation and finally increased expenditure shows that there is a huge demand for such schemes. The fund absorption capacity of uh, governments, have, uh, state governments have increased and there is part the need to expand primary care, secondary care to uh, vehicles like NHM. We need not only for maternal and child health, but also whole red, uh, range of uh, communicable, non-communicable diseases. We need greater investment. And we have seen how the health sector has suffered in this period of time. So I, I, there is uh, ample scope of improvement. The national mental health, uh, the tele-mental health program has been mentioned. But let me point out, within the national health mission, the budget allocated to national mental health program is 40 crore rupees, which is just rupees 30 per person per year. So, you know, these uh, these issues have been raised repeatedly, but we need significant improvement in terms. If we contrast this with the schemes that are incentivizing private sector in healthcare, the uh, Prime Minister's Janarigya Yojana, the Digital uh, Health Mission, the Ayushman Digital Mission, we see significant jump in allocation. The Ayushman Digital Mission has got 560% increase in allocation at a time where our health sector needed basic infrastructure. And every year, the PMJY. Uh, is unable to spend the uh, budget it has been allocated. It spends only 30 to 40 percent of allocation. But then we see continuous uh, the allocations are retained, uh, and there is always hope that the private sector would step up and spend get the uh, benefit of the scheme. But in the in the period of uh, the crisis, we have seen how the private sector has failed. Now, uh, so, but then. Uh, what is the harm? The problem is the schemes, the components that could strengthen the health system. That those schemes are being neglected over the period. And uh, they, for instance, the National uh, Urban Health Mission is not receiving any significant allocation. And in the period of COVID, it has been become very clear that primary care in urban areas are in a poor state, and we need to spend more and more resources uh, to rebuild the primary care in urban area. And NHM, NUHM could have been the vehicle which could spend in that. But unfortunately, there is no such uh, push. That, rather, there is a push for tertiary tertiarization of healthcare, which is very unfortunate. Uh, there is a lot uh, uh, said about health sector. One last point I want to say, NHM is also important because it, it uh, you know, large part of the health workforce, which are women, particularly the frontline health workers, the ASHA workers, the a the Anganwadi workers, they 
are not even paid particularly ashas and anganwadi workers are not even paid minimum wages and we need to bring their right their safety their concerns at the forefront and we need to increase allocation uh, because most of these frontline workers are women majority overwhelming majority of them are women so we need to uh, in step up their expenditure allocation in such schemes uh, i think i'll stop here because and i would like to also early here the other pan, uh, participants who have been patiently hearing us for a long period of time and thanks again uh, for giving me this opportunity and i uh, it has been a phenomenal learning experience here in from all of you thank you so much thank you so much indonil uh, would have loved to hear you more and uh, thank you very much for uh, considering the interests of the participants and allowing them to uh, ask some questions so now i'll uh, uh, open the floor for any questions or observations plus please uh, keep your uh, questions uh, very limited uh, and your even your observation should be uh, should not be long because as you can see we have uh, long uh, overshot the time that we had at our disposal so the floor floor is open please introduce yourself and direct your question to whichever panelist you want to want uh, to answer thank you you may raise your hand you know in case uh, anyone i don't see any any uh, questions from anyone um so no one has any questions i think uh, you know the, the the panelists have been uh, convincing enough uh, with their arguments and there there are no questions so uh, let me now uh, uh, try and uh, uh, conclude this uh, meeting when i'll uh, there is nothing much for me to actually summarize because there's been such exhaustive presentations by each of the panelists um, i would say that uh, uh, i would say that you know this was a, a really challenging budget that uh, you know at a, at, a, at a, an extremely challenging juncture for the country which uh, nitya mentioned at the beginning this is an exceptional situation that we are in and uh, you know the government has uh, uh, have has tried to provide the stimulus looking at the at the, at the longer longer term and like uh, as uh, many of us mentioned that uh, increase in capital expenditure is something that is is welcome uh, certainly something that the country needs and in the context of what uh, professor atul sharma said that uh, our uh, uh, capital investment uh, has been uh, been coming down our uh, and uh, given that situation uh, we needed to do something the government needed to reverse that that situation and it has done in a uh, in a substantial manner uh, the the only issue that uh, many of us have have, have been uh, uh, worried about is that uh, is, is there enough uh, for overcoming the crisis that we have today and uh, there is there is no doubt that we are still in the midst of uh, the problem and several sectors as uh, each one of the panelists mentioned are uh, are really a, in a in a in a serious problem uh the point that uh, uh professor ashwini mahajan made that the government uh, acts as a as a facilitator that's a very important uh, point that he made and that is the reason why we feel that uh, the uh the budget making exercise is so very important that uh, the government uh, has a significant role to play and uh, we have all along been uh, uh, pointing out that the entire uh, new liberal agenda uh, will not take the country any, anywhere the government has to be a very important player in this uh, framework and and the fiscal policy of the government uh, uh, is uh, is is extremely important to give direction to the economy 
and that's the reason why uh, many of us have been uh, arguing that uh, the the stimulus that was pro provided uh, in 2020 the fiscal component of that should have been much more as, as compared to what the government thought that you know uh, 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 pumping in money through the reserve bank and so uh, rather than going in for monetary policy solutions uh, fiscal policy was very important it was something which uh, even the imf was emphasizing very strangely that uh, the importance of fiscal policy which was done uh, in and swallowed in many countries so uh, the government as a facilitator and the finance minister also mentioned that uh, government spending and the government spending on uh, especially on the on on uh, uh, on 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 capital uh, creation of more capital would draw in more uh, private investment. So this whole crowding in the um, aspect that uh, that uh, the finance minister mentioned and uh, Professor Ashwini Mahajan also indicated that. I think that's a that's a, that's, a, that's an important point, uh, and uh, we have seen it in the past also that uh, the government uh, gave. Uh, tax breaks to the corporates, but uh, we didn't see commensurate investment increase. Uh, of course, immediately after that, we had the pandemic. But uh, the the private sector always looks at the market conditions and the and unless the demand conditions recover and and become um, uh, you know uh, good enough for them to put in their money, they they are not going to be. Uh, and uh, therefore, we felt that. Uh, there were. Uh, it was necessary for the government to take uh, proactive measures to stimulate demand, and therefore uh, the points that we all made about uh, increasing Narega spending or even uh, even the uh, uh, National Food Security Act, where the poor would actually have some disposable income in order to create a certain amount of demand. Uh, so in the short run, all this is important, but in the longer run. Uh, again, I think every Spanish has mentioned about the importance of creating more jobs. And uh, how do you create more jobs and especially the challenges to create jobs in the, uh, you know, in the informal e economy? Because the formal large, large uh, corporates are not creating jobs. And how do you actually support jobs? How do you ensure that the MSME sector gets uh, and the micro enterprises get, get back on, the, on track? And uh, and micro enterprises, uh, all of us know that they don't get support from the formal, uh, uh, you know, uh, financial uh, the the credit system. So what can be done about these uh, smaller uh, enterprises so that uh, they can get up on their two feet? So these are some of the issues that we thought was important. And uh, you know, we will. I think finally, I would say that uh, we'll always remain. Uh, a, a bit dissatisfied with the government does because I think the, as the expectations we have for, for this country and the younger people is, is sky high, especially after there was an, a report uh, uh, published by the um, uh, the World Economic Forum in their recent Davo, before the re recent Davos meeting, which uh, said that you know there are uh, at least five major pain points that India faces. And and one of them is uh, youth hopelessness, and that's uh, that's one issue that uh, I think uh, all of us are are mindful of uh, with the kind of uh, uh, um, job situation in this country, and and and, and therefore we would all expect that the government actually puts its best best foot forward in in order to get the country on a on a, on a steady and a and a and a, and a, and a virtuous cycle. So with that, uh, I would again, on behalf of all the panelists and my own, my own self, uh, like to thank uh, CSD, uh, Professor Muchkun Dube, uh, Professor Nityanan, uh, and of course Akhil, uh, you know, for uh, uh, having us all here, and uh, Akhil for facilita facilitating this whole program. When it's been wonderful. So uh, I like to close the meeting here. And thank you very much and hope to see you again in one of those, uh, one of the future SDF meetings. Thank you very much. All the very best. Thank you, sir. I join uh, <clears throat> uh, Professor Vishishdar in extending uh, a warm thanks on the behalf of SDF uh, CSD uh, to all of you who uh, took out time from your busy schedule.
and enrich the discussion with their uh, presentations and deliberations we hope to see you and welcome you uh, in our future programs as well thank you thank you very much